안녕하세요. 박창주 교수입니다. Greetings. I'm Professor Park Chang-ju. We know well. Extraction needs to be done to place the implant. Extraction needs to be done quickly without pain for the patient to come back to receive implant treatment. Immediate implantation. Extraction is even more important in those cases. But a lot of people find extraction difficult. In the real world, an immediate implantation, it takes more time for extraction frequently. Extraction needs to be done successfully in order for a patient to have higher satisfaction. So extraction is a very important procedure. Let's look at extraction techniques to place implant well, especially in the premolar region. Let's master this. Let us look at the contents. First, immediate implant placement. I'm going to talk about immediate implant placement. Second, a traumatic extraction of premolars. I'm going to focus on premolars. Third, peritomy. This is a procedure I want to focus on. And then I'm going to summarize. Immediate implant placement has started in the early 2000s and it is now an established procedure. As you can see, delayed versus immediate implant placement. Recently, in terms of success or survival rate, there is no major difference. Depending on the patient cases, they need to be decided. Immediate implant placement. Let's look at this. Splinted versus single. In the past, in the past, people thought you were sure to succeed when it was splinted implant, but now, in single implants, the success and survival rates are high as well. In the past, we only talked about function, but now we also talk about aesthetics in regards to immediate implant placement. It needs to have at least a similar result as delayed placement. Research has progressed. And in infected and non-infected sockets, they were compared. In infected sockets, various procedures were done for immediate implant placement and compared with non-infected sockets, the survival and success rates are very similar. Immediate implant placement is a established procedure and I hope you remember this. Let's look at a case. As you can see in number 24, vertical crown root fracture was observed. The patient complained of severe pain and as you can see, extraction was done. Curatage was done thoroughly in the socket. Drilling was done. Immediate implant placement will be also addressed by a different director, but direction and position is very important. You need to place it as palatally as possible, use drill and check position and direction. Implant has been placed. The position looks okay. Mount is removed and final placement depth is adjusted. As you can see, labial plate and implant fixture. In between that, I put bovine bone graft and connected healing abutment. After that, collagen sponge was placed and figure of eight suture was done. 
five months after surgery. As you can see, around the implant, especially buccolabially, there is sufficient bone and soft tissue, and we can prevent resorption to some level. So in such cases, what is most important and what takes most time? What do you think it was? It was extraction. Extraction determines everything. It takes the most time and it's very difficult. Therefore, an immediate implant placement extraction plays a key role. Before I talk about atraumatic extraction, I like to talk about the existing method. Let's take a look. Tooth extraction was done by tooth elevator or forcep. You shake it and pull it out. If you shake or pull it out, it'll lead to, as written, it can cause fracture or deformation of the dental alveolar housing, particularly in the upper area region, the aesthetic region, the thin labial plate, if you do it the conventional method, it will disappear due to damage. If you do it like this, you can extract very quickly. You just put it in especially in the palatal region, if you just use elevator and shove it a couple of times, the plate will fracture and the tooth will come out. However, atraumatic extraction. This is minimally invasive extraction. I would like to emphasize that it should be minimally invasive. You need to do it as carefully as well, rather than breaking adjacent tissue. You don't pull teeth out breaking adjacent tissue. You preserve the bone and gingival architecture, and you do it as carefully as possible. The bone and gingival in the adjacent area should be intact for immediate or delayed implant placement. It will help. You need to do it very carefully. You cannot destroy the adjacent tissue and bone. The atraumatic extraction principles. First, flap, if possible, should not be open or it needs to be done in a minimal way. Second, all procedures, peritomy, luxation, it is moving the tooth slightly away from the socket, and removal of tooth needs to be done carefully and meticulously, and you need to be very cautious in doing this. Third is osteotomy. What you do on the bone needs to be minimized, and what you do on the tooth, odontomy, needs to be comparatively more. That is atraumatic extraction. Fourth, you need to do complete curettage of granulation tissue after extraction. These are the principles of atraumatic extraction. I would like to especially focus on extraction of premolars. We have two premolars per quadrant. First, maxillary first premolar. What is the characteristic? It has two roots. It has multiple roots. And in general, the size and contour is the biggest. Second is second premolar in the upper area. The contour and size is the smallest premolar. 
In general, it's, it does not have two roots, but it's a single root. Let's go to the lower. First the premolar in the lower area. The first the premolar in the lower, the lingual cusp is small, so it is almost like a canine tooth. Lingual tubercle cusp is small and it has a single root. The second premolar, it has a lingual groove in the lingual cusp and and like a molar, mesolingual cusp and distolingual cusp exists. So how should we do extraction in these premolars? First, if you can hold on to it, you can use forcep. You use forcep rather than elevating force you need to use rotating force. You need to rotate it rather than elevate it. The adjacent bone and gingiva needs to be intact. So rotating force needs to be applied. When you apply elevating force, you need to do it buccal, uh, mesiodistally rather than buccal lingually. Mesiodistally rather than buccolingually. Because if you apply force buccolingually, the thin buccal plate will be broken. And when you use forcep for a traumatic extraction, you need to keep these in mind. If there's very limited area where you can hold on to, you need to use extraction elevator. In the movement in using the elevator, you can elevate it, rotate it, or you can wedge it. As mentioned, rather than elevating movement, you need to rotate it or wedge it to achieve a traumatic extraction. When you use elevator, extraction elevator, you need to consider where you're going to put it in. If you apply force in the wrong way, the surrounding tooth structure may fracture as the tooth comes out. You need to put it in the most thick area. So you don't, you shouldn't put extraction elevator in thin areas in order to prevent damages. Please remember this. Tooth sectioning at times can be recommended. In the case of multiple roots, you do tooth sectioning and make it into a single root or two roots. For lower molar, tooth has two roots, so tooth sectioning in the middle is done. In upper molar, the roots, there are three roots. So sectioning is done twice, buccal mesial, buccal distal, and palatal root are separately taken out. At times, such tooth sectioning is required in premolar as well. Buccal lingually, you need to do it in the middle. As you can see, maxillary first premolar, maxillary second premolar, mandibular first premolar, mandibular second premolar. Which tooth requires tooth sectioning? That is right. The maxillary first premolar, which has multiple roots, to a certain level, you need to do tooth sectioning buccal and lingually. As shown, the roots separate like this, cusp or occlusal surface, you need to go in rather deep when you do tooth sectioning. The root is divided very apically, so we need to be aware.
그리고 어디에도 To the elevator, if you cannot use it, if there's no space to put it in, you can do minimal osteotomy to insert the extraction elevator. You can put instruments by using minimal osteotomy. However, if you do osteotomy and put in multiple instruments, you always need to put your other hand to the other side and whenever you apply force, you need to put your hand on the other side and whenever you apply force, understand where the force is applied and be sensitive to the tactile changes of the surrounding structure. Peritomy. I'll talk about peritomy now. As shown, before extraction, to sever the connective tissue attachment and Sharpie's fiber in the periodontal ligament space. When you do peritomy, as you do extraction, the adjacent bone, sometimes it comes out together. And if you do peritomy, you can minimize that. Regardless of the instrument, as far as the tip of the instrument can be reached, you need to go in as deep as far as the tip of the instrument can be reached. Let's look at the image for better understanding gingival sulcus, junctional epithelium, connective tissue attachment. In order to do atraumatic extraction, you choose your instrument. And you put it in as deep as possible to sever the connective tissue attachment. And this is called a peritomy. As shown, periotome is most frequently used. If you don't have periotome or if you don't want to use it, you can also use Explorer. How you use Explorer? If there's a tooth to be extracted around it, Put the tip of the explorer as deep as possible to sever connective tissue attachment. According to recent literature, you can do peritomy using ultrasonic scalar tip. Also, some people use piezo tip. Others use laser tips. Everything is good. So you need to put the instrument as far as possible and do peritomy in order to do atraumatic extraction. That is the most basic. Let's summarize. Immediate implant placement is an established procedure. I've already talked about this. Second, atraumatic extraction was discussed, especially regarding premolars and how you should do it. Third, peritomy was discussed. I want to emphasize this. There is no defined way to do extraction. There's no set answer. I'd like to give you a couple of tips. First, be strategic. As mentioned, you need to choose your extraction instrument appropriately. Choose whether you're going to use elevator or forcep. At times you may need to do two sectioning or need to do osteotomy in a minimal way. You can also consider peritomy. Second, when you're using instrument for extraction, you need to put your hand in the surrounding structures so you can understand how the bone or the surrounding structure responds. Third, Koreans are notoriously poor at this. You need to be patient and you need to be cautious. Dentists have a saying. 
Invest one hour for extraction and five minutes for implant placement. In extraction needs to be done very carefully and cautiously, and it's a testament to that. I talked about premolar extraction for good implant placement. I hope I've satisfied a lot of your questions. As you've watched my lecture or after that, if you have any questions, please leave your questions in on the Denal homepage. I'll reply them in the best way. Please note that more learning experiences are available in offline master courses. That's it for today. Thank you for watching.